Hi and welcome to Neat AI. So I'm in the middle of coding up Pac-Man so I can stick a neural net on the little guy and get him to play the game. But I especially want to focus on the ghosts and code up their original chase mechanics. Fans of the genre will know that they all have their own names and strategies for chasing Pac-Man. But I'm also going to give them their own neat neural nets and allow them to communicate and see what emerges. I'd like to see some type of cooperative play, maybe setting ambushes, or at least working together to defeat Pac-Man. But to start with, I wanted something simple and easy to code, which would allow them to get going. I started looking at different pathfinding algorithms and looked at all the standard options, but eventually settled on a simplified version of a goal-based vector field, also known as a flow field. To fully test it, I coded up an auto maze generator routine and dropped a few hundred balls into it to see what would happen. Simplified flow fields are really easy to code up. I say simplified because I'm not going to bother with the cost and vector components, as I don't need them for this. All I'm going to do is code up a grid and place a target in it. The target location is assigned a value of 0, and its immediate neighbors assigned a value of 1. I then circle outwards from the target and add an ever-increasing value for each neighbor encountered. If a neighboring cell is set as a wall, it simply gets ignored and the routine moves past it. And this continues until the edge of the grid is reached. Any object placed on the grid will simply have to check its eight neighboring cells and move to the one with the lowest field value on each frame of the game. This will automatically cause them to flow towards the target grid point. This approach does away with the need for individual path to target calculations and placing thousands of objects on the grid is easily handled. I've applied a heat map to aid visualizing what's happening any area showing as red is an area with the longest path back to the target. Extending it out to larger and larger grids, you can see it scales just fine. I've created a class for a ball object and a routine which creates one every time I drag the mouse over the grid. So I really want to test it out, so I've decided to create a maze for this. Maze creation is a nice tool to have in the toolbox. The algorithm I'm using here is really nice, as it guarantees completeness. It doesn't matter how large the maze is, it will fill all of the cells, and it guarantees every cell can touch every other cell, so it doesn't matter where you start. You're guaranteed to get to the objective location. So if I take a 4x4 array to use as my maze, and a stack to track the cells I visited and in what order, I'm going to start by arming my stack with some data and I'm going to arm it with the starting coordinates, which in this case is 1-1. One, one. So that's one along and one down, and I'm going to mark that cell as being visited. For my current position, I've got to choose one of my neighbors to move to. I've got a choice of two neighbors, and I'm going to randomly select one of them. Let's say 1-2. So I create a link between them, and I've pushed the new location onto the top of my stack. And I repeat this by looking at my neighbors and choosing one of them randomly. I can't go back to one I've already visited, so once again, I roll the dice and go east and push it onto the stack and mark it. And this continues until I encounter an issue. At cell 2-1, there are no neighbors to move to, so I need to backtrack. And this is where the stack comes in useful, because it contains a history of all locations that I've been to previously. So if I pop the top off the stack, I can move back one. And I'll continue to do this until I reach a cell with a free neighbor. In this case, it's cell 4-3. So I'll move there and update the stack. The algorithm continues until again it reaches a cell with no free neighbors. So once again, I need to backtrack by using the stack until I get to a cell with a free neighbor and it's the only one I can choose. At this stage, I've visited all of the cells in the array. Once all the cells have been visited, I fill in wherever I don't have a link between two cells and these will form the walls of the maze. At this stage, the stack is no longer needed, and I can get rid of all the construction data. And we're left with a small maze. Looking at some larger examples, the routine can create quite complex structures very, very quickly. The flow field can then be applied by positioning a target location somewhere in the grid and letting it find its way through the maze. Again, I've color-coded it to see where the longest paths are going to lie. Any object placed in the grid can find its way to the target by simply moving to a neighboring cell with a lower field value. From its perspective, it's simply rolling down a hill to the target. No computation is required, and again, this is a real strength of this approach. 
as individual paths don't need to be computed. If I sprinkle a few hundred balls into the red zone, we can see the path they take to get to the target. For them, they're all just rolling downhill. I think this approach will work just fine to get things moving with the ghosts in Pac-Man. I can easily create a slightly different flow map for each of the ghosts so they won't end up in a train and the routine on a Pac-Man sized map will run dozens of times a second so it can certainly handle it. That's it for now. If you want to see how the Pac-Man saga works out, please do like and subscribe.